What's up everyone and welcome back. I am Clay and today I want to talk to you about some Nintendo Switch games that I've been enjoying. Um, and, excuse uh, me for a second, oh but um, according to the internet, the Nintendo Switch has no games. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying today, I want to take a look at five indie games on the Nintendo Switch that are worth your time checking out at some point. Now, some of these you may have heard of and others you might not know about, and these are in no particular order, so let's go ahead and get into it. First on our list is Bug Fables, The Everlasting Sapling, developed by Moonsprout Games. We follow our main protagonist, Violet, a bee with a boomerang for a weapon who goes by the nickname Vi, Cabo the Beetle, and Leaf the Moth on their quest to discover the secret to eternal life in Bulgaria. You may notice some similarities here between Bug Fables and the first two Paper Mario games, and honestly, that's the main reason I wanted to check this game out. After the announcement of Paper Mario the Origami King, I was in need of some paper RPG goodness, and Bug Fables hit the spot. Everything, from the writing, characters, and even the music harken back to the GameCube days of the Thousand Year Door. While traveling the overworld of Bulgaria, you have the option to freely swap between party members and use their various abilities to complete different tasks and reach items. These will also be crucial in progressing the story. Like any RPG, some areas remain inaccessible until later in the game when you have new abilities and powers for your characters. Speaking on the similarities of earlier Paper Mario games, each battle will earn you exploration points, which is how your team levels up. Each level will award you the choice to upgrade your hit points, teamwork points, or metal points. <laughs> this sounds a little bit familiar, right? Teamwork points are the equivalent to flower points. They allow you to use each party member's special ability, while metal points are exactly the same. They allow you to equip different medals to each member, and each one have different and unique effects. The battles here are also your standard turn-based sequence, in which you can pick to either run, use an item, attack, or use flower points for a special ability. If you are looking to relive the magic of the Thousand Year Door without replaying it for the millionth time, or complaining that Paper Mario and the Origami King isn't the second coming, look no further. As of this video, Bug Fables The Everlasting Sapling is available on the eShop for $24.99. This game has been on my radar since developer Radical Fish made a very powerful statement that it would not be coming to the Switch. I held out hopes that one day we would see what looked on the surface to be an outstanding RPG make its way to the handheld beast. Finally, the waiting paid off and the HTML5 written game got its well-deserved Switch port and what a beauty this game is to behold. The story follows our main character, Lee, who is technically an Evotar, inside of a video game called Cross Worlds, on a mission to retrieve her lost memories and stop some foul play by the higher-ups at the company responsible for creating the game. Without spoiling anything, the story here is very strong and very well written. Lee is a fantastic protagonist to play as, and your friends and NPCs that you meet along the way also add to the overall depth of this game. Hitting that nostalgia feel from the graphical appearances of games such as Chrono Trigger or Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy 3 or 6, whatever you want to call it, and the other great SNES RPGs of the day, CrossCode's visuals are simply stunning. Dennis Akbalut created an auditory masterpiece of a soundtrack that fits into this game like a form-fitted glove. To go along with the epic tracks, CrossCode's gameplay is deep, with many mechanics to uncover and play around with to complete the game the way that you want to. Should CrossCode seem like your type of game, you can grab it right now for $19.99, and that is a steal for a game that is this good. From Tribute Games comes another pixel art based title that I absolutely fell in love with. The sprite work, the animations, the characters, and the music are all expertly done in this space pirate action platformer roguelike. <laughs> yeah. That's a mouthful. I first played this game on the PlayStation 4, and once I heard it was coming to the Switch, I knew I would be buying it all over again. It, it really is that good. The mechanics of the game are fairly straightforward, as they are with any roguelike. 
You play through different areas until you get that dreaded game over screen, after which you use the currency you collected during your run to purchase permanent upgrades to Captain Flinthook, your masked space pirate. Equipped with a grappling hook, a plasma gun, and the chrono belt, Flinthook is able to swing across levels quickly while using his chrono belt to slow down time and blast his foes with that plasma gun. Everything about the movement in this game is tight and precise. Grappling the hooks throughout each section of the procedurally generated spaceships feels fantastic, with a little bit of forgiveness for those hectic moments when an onslaught of enemies are headed your way. Along with the permanent upgrades, each dungeon or spaceship has their own unique power-ups that you can find and purchase along the way that only last during that current run. You will also find different types of sub-weapons that aid you on your mission to defeat the run's final boss. If roguelikes interest you in the slightest and you haven't taken a look at Flint Hook yet, I would highly suggest you add this game to your list. And you can pick it up right now for $14.99. A fairly unique Metroidvania style game from developer Villa Gorilla caught my attention in 2018 with beautiful art style and an interesting gameplay mechanic. Yoku Island Express follows little Yoku the Dung Beetle as he starts his new job as the postmaster for the Island Express. A blending of numerous genres made this game one of the standouts from that year for me personally. Taking a platforming, pinball, adventure, metroidvania game and making it something that was this highly praised takes a lot of skill and effort and it definitely shows while you're playing. During portions of the game, you control Yoku as he walks around his new island pushing his pinball that is tied to him in search of a way to stop the evil forces that are rising up to destroy his island. Unlike other platformers, you can't jump with Yoku. Instead, you will find pinball paddles tucked away in various locations that will launch you through the air, the ground, and even up inside of trees. Some of these paddles are locked and can only be unlocked by collecting fruit throughout the world. In some areas, you will need to enter a full-on pinball mode in order to proceed. Some of these include additional challenges like hitting certain targets while playing pinball or lodging your ball in just the right place. Like in other Metroidvanias, there will be some areas you simply cannot access until later in the game when you complete tasks to unlock those certain abilities. Unique gameplay paired with beautiful visuals and a rock-solid soundtrack make Yoku's Island Express one that anyone of any age can enjoy. If you're looking to pick it up, you can do so right now for $19.99. <laughs> yes, of course, the game that I can't stop talking about from Supergiant is going to make this list. By far one of the best games that I have played in 2020 or ever, really. And I'm absolutely sure you have probably heard about it by now. I loved Bastion. And Supergiant's love for creating games shines through when it comes to Hades. This roguelike dungeon crawler has some incredibly well-written characters, storylines, quips, and some good lore behind it. Pairing that with outstanding visuals, tight controls, a rocking soundtrack, and top-notch voice acting, I'll go out on a limb and say that this is Supergiant's best game to date. <sighs> Sorry, Bastion Transistor Empire, it's just true. If you've played other roguelikes, then you know what to expect here. It's the same loop of playing, dying, and upgrading. Only with Hades, there is actual story thrown in. A story that progresses as you continue on further and further, and even with the more that you die. Recalling those times that you did die, and how you died. Calling out when you've beaten an enemy, only to die later. And some characters that you interact with will even reference how it was that you died or what you did that led to it. Without spoiling too much, you play as the young demon prince Zagreus, son of Hades, lord of the underworld. Each run is Zag's attempt at escaping the underworld to reach the surface and eventually make his way to Olympus with his relative Zeus, Poseidon, Artemis, Ares, and well, you get the point. He is aided during his attempts by different ancient weapons that you can choose at the beginning of the run, along with various Greek gods who grant special abilities along the way. I could seriously go on and on about Hades, and I could make an entire video about it, but instead of spoiling it for you, how about I let you enjoy it for yourself? If you don't give any of these other games a shot, at least please do me a favor and take a look at this one. I do not think that you will be disappointed for $24.99. 
And that wraps up this one. Those are just five of the indie titles on the Nintendo Switch that I think are worth your time in checking out. Do keep in mind that the prices are subject to change at any time, and the ones I listed in this video are USD. If you know of any other game that I didn't list in here, go ahead and drop those in that comment section down there below that like button. I'm already working on part two of this video series, and I would love to be able to do a part three with suggestions from you all. And until next time, take care everyone.